Dear Miami Lakers, and welcome to our live question and answer session on reopening Miami Lakes uh, economy here in the town of Miami Lakes. I want to introduce some of are here with us today. Uh, you have our Deputy Town Attorney, Lorenzo Cobiea, who is going to be able to answer uh, some of your legal questions that you might have in terms of how this is going to go on. Uh, you have Eddie Blanco, the chair of our Economic Development Committee, who was actually a member of the County Mayor's New Normal Initiative. And what was really great was that a lot of the rules that that New Normal Initiative uh, produced and a lot of the regulations and guidelines and procedures is now being adopted by the entire state by the governor. So Eddie had a hand in that so he could give you some insight on how those meetings went. And we have our town manager who has the actual orders here, uh, who's going to be explaining some of, some of that right off the bat, and our deputy uh, town manager is with us, Tony Lopez. But to break the ice, uh, I want to start off with our manager specifically, because I know a lot of people are excited about Monday, Monday's reopening. We will be reopening this upcoming Monday, uh, May 18th. But to start off, because I want to be very clear on, on those expectations, while we may be reopening, there are other cities in Dade County that will not be reopening on Monday. And I know a lot of you guys uh, work uh, or own businesses in other municipalities throughout Dade County. So make sure that you tune in to their social media feeds, so whatever cities they might be, if it's surrounding cities of Hialeah, Hialeah Gardens, Miami Gardens, Opalaka, uh, even cities up in, in Broward County like Miramar. Uh, so make sure you follow us as, as to what's going on there. So they might or might, we will be opening up. But to break the ice on this, I wanted the manager just really uh, Unfortunately, due to the, 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 the county mayor's orders, uh, to just to talk about those real quick, because the majority of our businesses will be opening, but there will be businesses that will not be reopening on Monday. So let's talk about those first. I don't know if you want to chime in on that, Mr. Manager. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as most of you may have seen already, uh, there was a press conference that was uh, held earlier today uh, at the midday. Both the governor of the state of Florida and the mayor of Miami-Dade County both are issuing today orders reopening the economy in Miami-Dade and Broward County. So all of the non-essential businesses in the town of Miami Lakes, with the exception of bars, pubs, nightclubs, banquet halls, cocktail lounges, cabarets, breweries, movie theaters, uh, concert halls, uh, auditoriums, and massage parlors, those are the ones that will not be open. So as you can see, the majority of the non-essential businesses in the town of Miami Lakes will be reopening starting on uh, Monday. Le quería avisar eh, a través de convirtiendo eh, al español eh, que hoy el gobernador del estado de la Florida y el alcalde de Miami Dade County eh, tuvieron una rueda y anunciaron que van a los dos autorizar la reapertura de la economía aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes. Todos los negocios que antes se consideraban no, es, no esencial van a poder abrir menos eh, bar y cabaret, eh, uh, gimnasios, el teatro y cualquier otro auditorio. Esos son los, básicamente esos son los negocios la ciudad de Miami Lakes que no van a poder abrir, ellos van a estar incluidos en otra fase más adelante. También antes que se me olvide quería avisar que hay otro punto muy importante que también es de buena noticia, que hoy por el, sept, el séptimo día, una semana seguida, sin un caso nuevo del coronavirus aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes, llevamos casi tres semanas que solamente tenemos dos casos nuevos. So, Eh, otra vez una buena noticia en ese sentido y I turn it back over to the mayor that today's number once again is staying at 45 45 el número de casos we have now gone one whole week without a single new case in Miami Lakes and we've gone almost a uh, bit of new, uh, good news to go along with the reopening of our economy here in Miami Lakes 
And I just want to make a point in regards to the businesses that won't be opening, uh, we are going to continue to advocate on your behalf. We want to make sure that everybody is, is open in our, in our community because we know uh, while those terms get used, non-essential or essential, we know that they are essential to you and to your family and to your customers and your employees. So we will continue from the Economic Development Committee, the manager, myself, staff, everybody, our volunteers, we will continue advocating on your behalf to get you open as soon as possible. But real quick, just staying on those businesses, we have two theaters in town, obviously the main Cox Theater here in our community and a smaller community theater. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about those. Obviously, those are not going to open. Shula's uh, Gym, a lot of the other gyms around town, uh, Theory. Not in this first round. This first phase will not include uh, those types of businesses. They're already working on what's going to be the timeline. So they're going to be in the, in the next phase of the reopening. In addition to, I know that at the county level, they're already working and soon to come out with information for many of you parents who I know are, uh, are concerned. They're going to be coming out with summer camp information. They have a work group that's already been established. They've already started to work on it. And what are the restrictions that will be allowed? But I know that that's a concern to many parents, and they are already working on that. And there's a work group that will be forwarding recommendations to the mayor uh, for him to uh, address it with the medical professionals and see what they can do. I think we all know that we open our economy, we have to have summer camps, we have to have child care, we have to have these types of things to fully reopen our economy. But Mr. Manager, staying on those businesses, and I want you to be clear with some of the folks, when you talk about bars, for example, if somebody goes who's right next to City Hall, uh, what happens to their bar area, what happens, what's the scenario there where some folks just go in to have a drink, I mean, how does, how does that work? Yeah, we don't have any that are just standalone bars here in the town, all of our uh, bars are really bar areas inside of restaurants. Those restaurants will be allowed to reopen, but the area uh, for the bar will remain closed in this first phase. So uh, all of those will be uh, inside of the Ale House or uh, any of the other areas, uh, Outback, all of those bars, the bar area will remain closed. The rest of the restaurant will be open. And actually, Mayor, I just want to announce, that opening, they were talking about uh, capacity of the restaurants. That's always a big question that we have. The capacity that both the governor and the mayor have uh, have authorized in their uh, orders is at 50%. Originally, the rest of the state was uh, only allowing restaurants to be open with a 25% capacity. But the, uh, the mayor and the governor uh, have both authorized 50% as long as they can maintain social distancing and keeping tables uh, far enough away from each other, they're going to allow a 50% capacity starting Monday. So Chair Blanco, I know you worked on the new normal initiative uh, for the county. You did a great job advocating to open our businesses. A lot of the rules that you worked on actually got adopted statewide now. Uh, but just to give folks an example, uh, our, our barbershops, our salons, you know, what are they looking at in terms of of regulations and I know some those are already some of the questions I'm being asked because I know people can't wait to go back to their uh, their barbers or, or their, their salon folks and, and and going in there so what, what are they looking at in terms of regulation each each what, what, what the mayor's task force did was they broke down the businesses into different segments so you have hotels restaurants um, barbershops and salons and those and each one of those has another layer on each one of those um, businesses. The overlying guidelines are the basic stuff that we've been hearing over and over again. PPE, people wearing masks is a requirement indoors. Uh, the separation of six feet, um, that's going to be required. The uh, regular cleaning of the hot spots, uh, the, touch, the high touch points, the door handles, the points where people are going to be accessing a lot. The cleaning of the bathrooms uh, every two to three hours. Those are overlying guidelines um, that are going to be on every business. And then each one of the business has an overlay, and that's all outlined in this uh, report that was issued by the county mayor. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Mayor, I just wanted to highlight, and I probably should have mentioned it at the onset, is that the all of the guidelines, especially for businesses, right, because they're the ones...
their own business and make sure that everything is done according to the guidelines. The Miami-Dade County has issued a guide for primarily businesses, but also obviously it's available to anybody to read and, uh, and review. But businesses, depending on what kind of business you are running, you can go. We have now posted this guide on the Miami Lakes website. So if you go to miamilakes-fl.gov forward slash coronavirus, there's a link on that page for this guide. The entire guide is over 185 barbershop, you own a beauty salon, you'll be able to go right to that section. You'll be able to see exactly what the expectation is for you as the business owner, what the expectation is for the patrons who come in. It's uh, it's really detailed uh, and it's really valuable. So you can find this guide on the Miami Lakes website. So it's miamilakes-fl.gov forward slash coronavirus. Near the, about one third of the way down the page, you'll see the link right there and you'll be able to go there and you can either download it or you can view it online. Got it. Uh, Deputy Town Attorney, on the legal side, how do folks comply? Do you even want to touch upon, can you touch upon on the consumers? Because there are rules, not only for businesses reopening on Monday, but there will be rules for consumers, people visiting these businesses and, you know, enforcement and stuff like that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I mean, it's important for the consumer out there, as, as well as the business owner, to understand that uh, this going back to normal is not really a uh, free-for-all. I mean, people need to maintain uh, social distancing at all times. People need to uh, maintain uh, wearing of the masks when they enter any restaurant, when they enter any of these businesses. Uh, it's incumbent on everyone to make sure that uh, we keep the numbers down. As long as we keep the numbers down, then phase two can come into effect. We can open up the gymnasiums, we can open up the rest of Miami Lakes and go back to more of a normal. But this is only going to happen if everybody cooperates, not only the business owners, but the consumers themselves. If the consumer notices that there's anything out of the norm, uh, they can report it. Uh, they can report it uh, to the town to report the enforcement department. They can also enforce it, uh, uh, report it to the police department as well. Uh, again, it's, it's really, uh, this town has been wonderful so far. Uh, we haven't had a lot of complaints as far as people not obeying uh, the rules that we have put forward. Uh, but we know that people are desperate to get their lives back in order. And we uh, urge people to still have a little bit of caution. Uh, we're not out of the woods yet. We're just trying to move forward and get our lives back to normal. Sarah, so I don't know if you see there's folks saying there's issues with, uh, with the connection. Um, uh, everything, everything looks fine on my end. Got it. Uh, so the connection are, and it's uh, and it's working. So we'll we'll keep working through that. Uh, but I know there's already some questions, and we want to make sure we answer all those. Uh, while it, it is exciting, I know we have there's a lot of rules and regulations that we all need to abide by to make sure that we keep getting past the uh, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, Deputy Town Manager, is there anything you want to chime in with at the moment before? Uh, just, just to you know, add to, to what you have stated. This is really focusing on our business community. All of the other orders that have been put in place in regards to the parks are still in, in place. So make sure that we continue to adhere those. Uh, and I just like to stress that I think this is an opportunity uh, for our business community to engage in this new normal. Tony's absolutely right. Well, this is definitely a challenge for our economic climate. It's also uh, an opportunity for an educational side, right? Improving business practices and changing the way businesses conduct, uh, uh, you know, the, the bringing in consumers and, and their customers. But I'll tell you this, I mean, it, it'll make folks stronger. It'll make businesses stronger, you know, and it'll add. Um, but uh, I want to get into some of the questions, start answering them, and we'll go, I'll go one by one. Uh, Raul and Valeria are saying, Nail salon. We didn't touch upon that. Nail salons opening or, or not? I don't know if you want to talk about some of the regulations on. We know nail salons will be opening, but I don't know if you want to touch upon. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's the the regulations are split out that there are so detailed. Obviously, the initial question is yes, nail salons will be reopened. 
but the 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 list of uh, of guidelines are talking about what each employee needs to do, how the uh, the uh, location needs to be laid out as far as the distance between chairs, cleanliness of the uh, of the uh, location, uh, temperature checks of employees if they're feeling bad. It's it's really important for you to look if you're a business owner of a nail salon. Go to our website, and you'll be able to go right to that section where that talks about nail salons. So go to miamilakes-fl.gov forward slash coronavirus, and you'll be able to see this entire guide, and you'll be able to go right to that section where the nail salons are uh, are detailed out, and it's probably worth of information just on nail salons al uh, alone. Can you share some of the highlights if you, whenever you get a chance? So we do know that the consumer, like our deputy town attorney, uh, was talking about it. you have to wear your mask. I mean, going into these establishments, you can't show up to these establishments and not have a mask. You're going to get turned away. We're encouraging our business owners to 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 deny service, right? To tell these folks, you have got to put on a mask. You got to do what's right, and that's the that's the only way to keep our economy open, correct, right? Mr. Attorney? I don't know if one of you guys want to chime in while the manager. That, that, uh, yes. no, absolutely, it's it's incumbent on on everyone uh, that if you see that there is misbehavior. Uh, Mayor, with regard to all of the personal grooming stores, they kind of lump all of those into one category. Personal grooming is barbershops, barbershops, beauty salons, nail salons, all of those that deal with personal grooming. And it talks about the uh, distance between customers, the fact that capacity has to be limited to 10 individuals or 25 percent. Uh, only customers that are receiving service will be allowed inside. All services require an appointment. Employees shall wear a mask and gloves at all times. Customers shall wear a mask when necessary uh, for remove for a short time, only when you're ready to get service. Uh, cleaning and disinfecting with EPA registered and labeled bac uh, bacteria sites. So as you see, it's very detailed. Uh, for those that are going to be getting a haircut, washing hair is compulsory. Uh, that's a mandate. Uh, talks about the disinfection of the workstations, the treatment rooms. So it's very detailed. It's two pages alone that specifies all of the uh, guidelines for the personal grooming uh, businesses. Uh, thank you. That's so important. I, know you wanted to I just wanted to chime in and, and add to uh, what our deputy town attorney was saying, which is that we need to be. It's a it's a cooperative effort between the community. It's not. Just but it's also incumbent on the customers to cooperate with these guidelines. Also, I'd like to add that these guidelines are just the basic guidelines. They're encouraging uh, business owners to, to do more if possible, or if they seem prudent to do more, uh, to take those normal where consumers are going to be looking to the businesses to make a safe place for them to go and do business, and that's going to be a new new expectation. And I think that businesses need to figure out how to do that in the best way possible. And consumers need to be cooperate to make this make this work. Because if the numbers don't continue in the trajectory, we could be going backwards. And we don't we certainly don't want that. We want to keep moving forward. So another question uh, that, that is being asked is uh, any idea what phase gyms will be in? Uh, and I think it's part of the question is when we talk about gyms, there's different types of gyms, right? There's your traditional Shulas, there's your CrossFit gyms, and then it's my gym on Main Street. That's really, it's a gym, but it's also an after school program. I mean, are, do some of those qualify for the reopening, or it, it all depends, Mr. T uh, Deputy Town Attorney or the manager, if you want to chime in on that, because I know I got one of those questions, and I know one of them specifically comes from the, the, the child gyms that are more like after school programs. I mean, well, how, how, how is that going? Yeah, what I, what I could tell you, Mayor, is that in this entire uh, guide that uh, was put together to help guide businesses and patrons, they kind of break it down by color coding. The initial phase that we were in, 
when everything was shut down other than just essential businesses was the red. When we were able to reopen our parks, we went to went to an orange uh, state or status. Now with this first phase of businesses reopening, we're in a yellow status. And then after that, there's only one more phase before we go back to normal. So I suspect, and I don't want to speak for the governor or the mayor of uh, Dade County, but I suspect that businesses that have more high contact, gymnasiums where people are closer, uh, courts that are uh, the kids playing basketball, parks being able to redo and start uh, baseball games and soccer games and football games again, all of that I suspect will be probably in the next phase. Do I know that for a fact? Absolutely not. But I suspect that that should be in the next round of reopenings because the only one past that is going to be a full reopening of our economy. Yep. And Mr. Mayor, if I can also add, my understanding is also that uh, the Miami-Dade County Mayor has uh, created a task force to take a look at some of the summer programs, which uh, my gym in Miami Lakes, maybe how summer programs are going to be offered to our youth this summer. So that's something that, uh, unless I'm speaking, Mr. Manager, we should be looking forward to as well. Yeah, and obviously it goes back to the point that uh, Mr. Blanco was stating, which is that if we continue with the level of cooperation from our residents, we're going to continue uh, on the road to recovery. All the, if we were to start making mistakes and going crazy, similar to what happened uh, with the sandbar, uh, shutting down all of the uh, marine uh, and boating out there, when uh, we saw all those people that one day, uh, some of the por uh, parks like South Point Park that had a, an overflow of people disregarding social distancing and then they shut down the park. We don't want to see that in Miami Lakes. So please, patrons, businesses, Please follow the guidelines so that none of us have to take a step backwards. We only want to keep moving forward. We don't want to go back at all in this recovery. So another question, hotels. We have five hotels here in the town of Miami Lakes that employ uh, many, 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 many people uh, and dozens of folks in our community. Uh, hotels, where are we on hotels? Hotels are open. Hotels are open, and again, in that in that in that in that uh, booklet put together, they have a multiple-page guideline on all the procedures, what employees need to do, how the rooms need to be prepared, what the separation guidelines are. It's all in detail in in, in the in the in the booklet, which was just signed. Uh, I would say within the last what, a couple of hours. So the manager is going to highlight. Just give a brief highlight, just to showcase, you know, the the importance of following five five of them here in our community. Uh, so, so, but they, they, they have been open or they're opening on Monday? Monday. Okay. Open on Monday. And, and I think it'd be prudent for like the EDC to work on maybe doing some marketing pieces or, or at least guiding people in the right direction and providing some of this information and disseminating the information so that people can get the information right. I mean, we have a guideline on our, on our website, which is a great step, but I'd like to see more education and preparation around that and support uh, so that people make the right the right choices. Go back to the... information as possible. Another question that we have, can the bar service continue without actually sitting at the bar? Can you receive a drink and you're sitting at your table? Thank God, yes. Yes. Got it. So you just, you, it won't allow patrons sitting at the bar. That's what the bar will be closed for. So the restaurants will continue, will be able to have a full and regular menu as well as full and regular, whatever they're licensed to provide as far as beer, wine, or regular drinks. So Eddie, yes, you can. So if you're at a restaurant, and I know we have several of them in our town that have bar bar areas, you can't sit at the bar, but you can sit at a regular table and still receive, if you want to drink a beer or whatever it may be, you can still do that uh, from your table, but you can't hang out at the bar. And fortunately for our businesses, the vast majority, I think all of our restaurants, uh, if they have bar service, uh, they, they actually have tables where, where they, they provide full. They're not just a regular bar. They don't Yeah. So the manager's going to touch upon, real quick, going back to hotels, since we have five of them, he's going to touch upon some of the, the highlights on reopening our, uh, our hotels, the five hotels here in our community. Yeah, if any of our uh, hotel uh, owners or managers are watching this, uh, this uh, briefing, 
The hotel and accommodations page, uh, the specific information for them is contained on page 54 of the guide. So it talks about the safety and health of the guest, so supervision. Uh, they want to make sure that uh, uh, any unusual rise in uh, worker absenteeism is identified, so they want to be able to identify when, when they see that there's a frequency there that maybe can be considered that maybe that person is uh, not feeling well. They're talking about the cleaning and the sanitation uh, of the uh, of the hotel rooms. It talks about the physical distancing of guests, uh, facial coverings, hand sanitizers at all of, uh, throughout the hotel, signage indicating so people who are coming in to be guests at the hotel will be able to be guided by the signage and know exactly what they need to do. Um, actual guest guidelines for the guests so to make sure that the guests understand that they have to uh, be uh, maintain social distancing it also talks about the uh, elevator use uh, an employee will be present at regular at a regular interval so they're going to make sure that all of the high touch areas the elevator and the hotel are going to be have to be uh, sanitized regularly Obviously, again, the social distancing, the elevator occupancy, how many people uh, are able to go into the elevator is going to be limited. They have to be able to, people have to be able to maintain a three foot distance inside the elevator. Um, so it, it, as you see, it's just the, whole, the uh, hotel area is probably close to 10 pages there. So that's, that's why we want to go ahead and highlight some of these things to showcase how important it is to visit our website, to go through these guidelines, to download them. You're a business owner, you're a consumer. If you're even a, if you're a consumer, you're going to visit a business. It's very important to, to print this stuff out. Uh, if you're a business owner, it is more than important. It is mandatory that you get these guidelines uh, and you go ahead and start implementing them today. Because you're going to have several days. You know, today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, until you open on Monday. But if open Monday. You have to abide by all the question that we have and, and anybody jump in. What about other businesses that are not restaurants and barbershops and salons? So what about businesses that really, they're not retail, right? They're office spaces, industrial spaces, you know, warehouse spaces, uh, not traditional retail. I mean, talk to us and anybody can chime in. What kind of regulations are they looking at? I mean, we, we've touched upon salons, personal grooming. We've touched upon hotels. We're going to be touching upon restaurants a little bit more in a minute, but what happens to those folks? What, what are they looking at? Well, as the manager mentioned, all those businesses are open. The exception is that exception list that he listed. Um, but I'll give you the guidelines that are over all businesses to kind of recap on some of those because those are important. And again, I think these are just basic guidelines. If you go to a business and they have guidelines that are a little bit more strict, as a consumer, be flexible, be, be cooperative, work with the business owner. All, all of us are just trying to make sure that we keep our employees safe, our businesses safe, and our community safe. So let's be cooperative and, and let's work together as a community. So the gathering... But for most small businesses, that the, the space requirements are going to have 10 business, 10 people or less. Uh, six foot distances between people, wearing facial coverings, uh, hand washing, uh, having sanitizer in all places, um, placing of trash receptacles to for the disposal of PPE, face masks, gloves, um, the posting of the CDC guidelines for the signage needs to be up on, on these businesses, um, it, it, uh, hand sanitizer throughout the business and on multiple locations where it's readily accessible. For consumers that's the overall uh, guidelines that's going to apply to all businesses for example it's, some offices won't be able to have their water stations open they're recommending not having your kitchen area open wherever people can congregate uh, markings on the floors will be in standard in businesses again all businesses have different guidelines but these are things to look for and be expecting in your in the businesses that are open so first, just to add another question about this, and I know Clarissa will share with them the guidelines. Personal grooming, what you talked about earlier, includes nail salons, correct? Yes. Oh, okay. That was one of the questions. Uh, barber shops, uh, hair salons, nail salons, anything dealing with personal grooming. 
Good, another good question, and chime in anybody that wants. So, and, and, and that just gives, if we can, give some of the highlights. Uh, pet groomers. We have several pet groomer community, uh, and that's one of the questions that I'm getting asked right now. What are the guidelines for, for, for those folks? We know the, the vet offices in our community stayed open, right? They were an essential business to make sure that our furry friends, furry family members were taken care of. Uh, but pet groomers, you know, talk to us a little bit about pet groomers. I don't know if you guys... Yeah, in, in the guide, they talk about, they have a, a more general uh, area where they talk about small businesses. There are some specific industries, like we already talked about restaurants or hotels, that they have a little bit more specific information. So there's nothing that I've seen so far, Eddie, unless you tell me that, that pet groomers fall into any one of those more specific uh, categories. So it, they would be included with the information that's starting on page 24 of our guide that talks about small businesses, small retail establishments. So whether you're a, a, a groomer or you're a uh, women's clothing, a small, all the shops there on Main Street, all of those types of uh, businesses would fall under this small business retail establishment. You want to give some of those highlights? Yeah, and it talks it's some of the information that Eddie was uh, detailing earlier, which talks about uh, a single point of entry, uh, facial coverings, hand sanitizers, spacing out uh, people six feet apart from each other, uh, soap and hand sanitizers, uh, limiting the number of staff and customers to 50% of max of the mall or the store's occupancy, signs. Uh, outside the elevator, the limit to four people per elevator in, in the malls. Um, cart and basket handles. So if you go to, for instance, uh, in a store where you may have a cart, they're gonna, they need to be sanitized by the, uh, by the store. Uh, no valet service. So if you used to go into the mall and you park instead of uh, parking yourself, if you want, the, the valet service will be suspended for now. Uh, arrows because they want to have a uh, similar to what we've done with the park for people who jog or walk they want the flow of people to be all in one direction so they're going to be marking the uh, hallways uh, to and the passageways to just all be in one direction um, and then obviously it talks about training the mandate on train their employees so that for their type of business they're completely familiar with all of these uh, rules and guidelines. Mm -hmm. and, and those guidelines have in them, they have the things that are bold, in bold letters that, that are required, and then there's things that are not in bold that are recommended. So Lorenzo, this is a question for you. Uh, talk to us about dry cleaners. Are the procedures change, anything changes? I know this question is specifically for you on dry cleaners. Talk to us about that. There's several dry cleaners. And by the way, the question comes from, from actually your mom, so just so you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, my mom. Dry uh, cleaners. Uh, dry cleaners have remained open uh, throughout the town. Uh, so they are considered uh, essential. They have continued operating. Uh, I know that uh, they, they continue. And one of the things to know is, uh, and you touched upon it, uh, Eddie, is uh, for all the businesses that are not included on this list, they were included in the prior list, and so those themselves. Those things are still in order, so it's just it's it's an ease, it's a relaxation. Again, not not a free for all. If you were allowed to operate before, you're still allowed to operate, but under the same restrictions. That's important that you mentioned that because one of the things that we made it made it clear was that the. We should delineate between the essentials and non-essentials. We should not, not delineate between them and, and, and basically put these mandates across all businesses because you know some of the small businesses were adversely affected by some of these guidelines. The initiative yeah. has to play by the same rules. So that's great. So uh, you know, I'll, I'll ask, our, I'll get our deputy town manager involved here a little bit. What about our public parks? I mean, we have uh, over 100 parks here in our community. We've only opened three of them out of, and we have over 90 something parks that are closed. When are we gonna open them? When we're opening up businesses, what's going on with our pocket parks? People wanna have the ability to go and, and enjoy the pocket parks, what's happening? Yeah, we're taking a very similar approach as, as looking at the businesses as well. Um, this is something that's being discussed uh, uh, with the county uh, uh, in 
terms of reopening additional parks. Uh, we are hoping that that's going to be coming sooner rather than later. Uh, we believe that uh, this is something that will be hopefully uh, transpiring in the next uh, few weeks. And it's really dependent on the level of activity and how the current phase of park openings across the county within our own community is progressing. So what we're currently doing uh, is, is being well received by our community. Uh, people are following the current mandates, which is a good thing. Uh, so it is our hope that with that progress, we'll be looking at a phase two to open more of our park system up to our community for their future. So I know a lot of new folks are jumping into the conversation. Just want to repeat where we're at, what we're doing, reopening our economy on Monday, May 18th. We're having this conversation with our town manager, Eddie Blanco, the chair of our economic development committee, who is actually initiative task force for the county where those rules are actually getting implemented statewide so Eddie was on the forefront of that we have our deputy town attorney Lorenzo Tobiella and our uh, deputy town manager uh, Tony Lopez with us so if you guys got any questions comments you know let us know we're, we're excited uh, just to 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 repeat it one more time for everybody chiming in the vast majority of our businesses uh, will be opening up the businesses impacted currently by uh, the county's order again this is not our order uh, there will be some that are closed. The two theaters in our community, uh, the main theater, the cop theater, uh, will be closed uh, for the time being. And the Main Street uh, Play Theater, uh, they will also be closed. And all bars uh, where they serve alcohol and these different restaurants will be closed also. So those are the main ones in our community that, that, that will be closed. Um, but the good news is the vast majority of our businesses will reopen on Monday, those guidelines are on our website. If you have any questions or you're concerned about anything or need clarification, you know, let us know. But Monday is a good day. We've gotten here because of your sacrifices. You've all had to make an incredible sacrifice as a community. Uh, a lot of people staying home, wearing masks, doing the right thing. We flattened the curve. That is uh, a fact. The curve has been flattened. Uh, hospital beds are in some areas are more available today than they were pre-COVID and that is due to, to the hard work of our residents so that is why we are, we are at where we're at today. Um, I'll double check if there's any other comments. Uh, I don't see any right now so we'll, were there anything else Claire? So any other comments on there? From, uh, on YouTube from Giovanni Salazar, he wants to know about basketball courts. So basketball courts, I love basketball. If it, listen, I, I want to open up uh, uh, the basketball courts. The toughest thing, and the manager could chime in about basketball courts, uh, is that we agree them. On a, at, a, at a park, it is almost impossible, right? I think the bigger courts that social distancing uh, is possible is at Miami Lakes Optimus Park, but those courts are owned by the Miami-Dade School District. Uh, so actually, the, the, the one courts that we can have social distancing, uh, we don't own uh, outright, but the courts that we do, it is almost impossible. And I know Tony, you're, you and, and Ed are all, all, everybody up here is basketball fans. And it, it is practice what the guidelines are saying on a half court. It is, it's just not, it's not practical, you know, so. Yeah. They're actually a smaller than normal half court. So, but I, I do want to give them hope, right? Because we believe that that is continually being uh, evaluated. By and I'm hoping that it won't be too far off into the distant future. So, be hopeful. It will open soon enough, and uh, and we'll be able to go back out there and shoot some hoops. Definitely. Uh, any questions for Twitter, or YouTube? I know. So, so we're going live to you uh, from Facebook, from the town's uh, Twitter page, and the town's YouTube page. And we hope one day, uh, depending on the technology, uh, we'll be able to go uh, live from uh, from Instagram. That. Any questions there, Clarissa, from from any of those sources? Yes, we have Charles Gutierrez um, asking about community pools. Great question. Community pools. Uh, there are many, many, many of them in our community. Almost every single apartment complex, HOA, uh, condo association has one. And I know a lot of folks want to get back in there. So, Mr. Manager, what are the rules on community pools? Yeah. Um, 
unfortunately, community pools are also part of the uh, list of businesses that or uh, locations that will continue to be closed. So the community pools will continue to be closed and similar to the basketball courts, I, I hope and believe that it won't be much more than uh, two to three more weeks uh, before we can uh, enjoy those uh, condo and uh, community pools again. Got it. Andy, Andy Lynn wants to know, is there still a curfew? If so, what are the times there is no curfew in the town of Miami Lakes? We had a temporary one for 10 days that we worked with Hialeah and Hialeah Gardens on. Uh, but just a reminder, uh, although we don't have a curfew, that doesn't mean the cities around us, to the west, to the east, to the south, in, in Miramar, doesn't mean that they don't have a curfew. I know they all did at, at some point, correct? Yes, um, and, and the ones that did have curfews are also some of the cities that are uh, going to delay their opening. We, as we've spoken here from the beginning today, we've indicated that we're going to follow uh, the guidance from Miami-Dade County and reopen on Monday for two reasons. One is to avoid confusion because everybody here listening to us, they want to, they want one message and that's what we're trying to uh, abide by, right? Have one message to make it less confusing. The second reason is because some of the cities around us have, uh, have actually decided that they're going to delay their own, which is, doesn't, you know, that's what they believe is uh, important for them. But here in the town of Miami Lakes, the cities around us, some of them also had curfews. And all of those curfews, uh, the only way that they're going to be able to reopen is going to be by lifting those curfews. So I suspect, but like the mayor said, please find out if you're going to be traveling through Hialeah or Miami Gardens. Those are the two cities close to us that for sure had curfews, and they're both going to be reopening later than us. They're going to be reopening probably the middle of next week instead of Monday. And just a reminder, I mean, one of the largest e economies in South Florida is right to the South Coast. They're not going to be reopening on Monday, correct, Mr. Manager? Correct. correct. They're going to wait till Wednesday or Thursday. So that's, just keep that in mind. You know, although we're excited, we're reopening on Monday, there's a lot of residents in our community that own businesses in these communities that are consumers in, in some of those communities. And they won't be open on Monday, so... Clara, so anything else from YouTube, Twitter? We have one last question from a local company, Miami Dancity, um, and they want to know uh, what about dance studios and other facilities where children congregate? Good question from Miami Dancity. What about dance studios and other facilities where children congregate? Uh, that is a great, great question. We'll we'll look through our guidelines now. And if I, I, think, I think it's no. Yeah. I believe that I believe we'll, we'll 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 find out and we'll post that on our uh, on our website and our social media. But uh, everything that I see, fitness studios, gymnasiums, uh, those all fit into that same uh, kind of uh, grouping. But we'll find out and we'll let you know on our. That's a good question. We're, I know we're looking through the order. Yeah, it, 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 I think that would fall under fitness studios, and I think the. Uh, Deputy Town Attorney agrees that you know it will be gymnasiums and fitness studios that that's probably where the dance studio would fall into, and they they're not allowed to open. Yeah, on Monday. That's your uh, opinion, Lorenzo. They could only see the, their own. Yes, yeah, we'll put it on the website. Right. So okay, we'll we'll double check that. It doesn't look like uh, from the preliminary discussion from the manager and our EDC chair and our deputy town attorney that uh, dance studios will be able to, to reopen but we'll double check with uh, with everybody and, and as the manager mentioned that there is a discussion around summer camps and how summer camps might be held so if the dance studio decides to do a summer camp they would be falling under that guideline as a summer camp if if if, the, if and when the county decides to lay out orders uh, with summer camps and how that's going to look so keep an eye out for that as well uh, so, so the folks from my gym, uh, they they want to know, you know, would it be the same for them? And I think that's where they where they're in the same boat. If the opinion from a dance studio is, hey, if if they can reopen or whatnot, it, would they fall under that same? Where where do where does my gym fall under? Because that that is, it's really not a fitness care. Where something I fall under? I think it's a hybrid. I'm just there. Uh, I think it's a it's a hybrid that falls within those two. A lot of small businesses out there that are not going to 
to fall necessarily neatly under one category, it may fall under more than one. And that's just the reality of, of, of the entrepreneurial spirit here in the town, where we try to make uh, businesses and, and provide services that sometimes are a little bit outside the box, like, like my gym. Uh, for, for the moment, anything that is a child care facility uh, or, or an aftercare facility is not is not allowed. I think for obvious reasons, we don't want to come to a lot of children all in one place, and that's one of the main reasons for that. Uh, and that's why I believe that when we look into the identity, it's probably going to fall somewhere around the same category, one that doesn't fall neatly within one category, but it falls within uh, multiple ones. But hey, this is a phased approach. We're, we're moving in the right direction, Mr. Mayor. Soon, the, the, the remainder of our small businesses will open. Hey, Mr. Manager, I saw you searching through there. Is there anything you want to chime in? Yeah, I was trying to see if a dance studio, how they define it in here, and I wasn't. But there's all of this is all, there's probably uh, 50 pages of just defining businesses. But we'll be able, we'll get that information and we'll uh, make sure that we get it uh, either posted or we'll get it to these businesses that are kind of like not really clearly defined what are they one way or the other. So if you are unsure of where you fall in these categories, Send me an email, the manager, any anybody up here. Send us an email, and we will get you an opinion as to where it, it is in the order. So that's something with, with everybody. You know, get us that information, and uh, and we'll get it there. Uh, Maria Barreto, she makes a, a point about today's blood drive. So again, just thank you everybody for going out today. I know there's still a line at Royal Oaks Park. They actually started off uh, with one bus. To, they ended up with four for the amount of people that showed up to, to get, not only get blood, but get the antibody test. That is so, so, so important uh, to continue opening up our economy and getting back to normal is really getting that data of understanding. You know, there's a lot of folks in our communities that were asymptomatic with COVID and they had no idea they had. And I think those, when those folks see that they have the antibody, that gives that data and that starts changing those numbers uh, uh, for our community. It starts showcasing what the real mortality rate is it starts showcasing what the real infection rate is. Uh, and that information is so, so important to continue uh, reopening our, our communities and going back to normal as soon as possible. So thank you all for, uh, for doing that. Let me see if we got any other. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, the, the questions continue coming up on summer camps, you know, and I think if, if not only summer camps, just if, if schools in general, summer camps, child care. How can we, this is a question, a general question how can we go back to normal right on monday going back to normal and folks have kids at home you know they can't go to school they're going to online virtual school you know what happens i know commissioner bogle was talking about you know working with businesses uh to to ensure that they allow uh their staffers to bring their kids to work and looking at different ways but summer camps are so vitally important especially in, in, that, in that phase to go back to normal and schools really opening up in, uh, in August. I don't know if any of you guys want to chime in because I think it's so here in the town of Miami Lakes. And Tony, you told me, I mean, you've been doing this since the town incorporated you. I think we got three or four summer camps here in our town at the youth center, at Royal Oaks, at over here at the clubhouse, at, at, I think at Mary Collins. You know, we, we got stuff happening all over the place and we know how vitally important that is to people. So I don't know if you want to chime in on that. Yeah, in, in this case, I think the predominant overarching theme is the safety of, of our children. Uh, and more importantly, that's why they're taking a very measured approach in terms of how and when we can offer summer camps. And I think the how is the most important part in terms of ensuring the safety of those children that are participating uh, and, and, and it be a productive setting for them uh, during a summer program period. So we do expect through the working group that that's something that's going to be coming to us with some recommendations sooner rather than later. Um, we hope uh, it will be as early as later uh, later on next week that we start seeing some guidelines and recommendations for those summer programs to hopefully uh, ramp up our registration as soon as we get some level of guidance and hopefully uh, some level of a green light to move forward with some type of programming for you. And I, I just want to reiterate, as much as we want to reopen our, our economy, open up summer camps, you know, allow our business owners to get back to normal, the reality is uh, the county has their executive orders, the state has their executive orders, and they supersede uh, us, you know, and, and the, the step that we took, the moment the county told us, hey, you can do X, Y, and Z, we were like, hey, we're, whatever we get, we're in, we're going to help our businesses out, 
but uh, but I do understand the frustration because you know we feel it too. We hear it every every single day, and we wish we could change things and, and kind of curtail it to our community. But we we, we got to work within the guidelines and the rules that we're given from the county and from the state. Um, let's see if we got Clarissa. Any other questions from Facebook, YouTube, anything on Instagram? No, we no, we're not on Instagram. No, we're not. Anything else you guys just want to chime in? Just have a conversation with folks or good? Yeah, I just wanted to, to add that uh, one uh, here in Town Hall, we are open. Um, uh, we are open now to the public as, as an essential business. So just wanted to remind the public that we are open, we are working, and we're here to and available to serve and answer any questions that you all may have throughout this development of a new normal process. La mayoría, la mayoría de nuestros negocios se van a reabrir el lunes. Eh, eso es algo bien importante y estamos bien entusiasmados por eso. Eh, pero van a haber negocios que no se van a reabrir por la orden del condado. Eh, los gimnasios no se van a reabrir. Eh, la barra donde pueden tomar cerveza o lo que sea no se van a abrir. Pero eh, la mayoría de los restaurantes que tienen la barra, la barra van a estar cerrada, pero pueden sentarse en las mesas y ordenar lo que quieren ordenar de, de ahí. Eh, y también los teatros. Los, los teatros, hay dos teatros aquí en nuestra comunidad, uno que van a ver películas, el otro que van a ver teatro tradicional. Eh, y los dos eso van a estar cerrados. Eh, y, y vamos a ver lo que va a pasar. Obviamente es muy difícil en un teatro a practicar distancia social. Eh, pero, pero la cosa buena es que vamos a reabrir, van a haber muchas regulaciones, como aquí hablamos ahorita mismo, eh, de, de, que van a haber bastantes regulaciones de, de, de tasamiento social, de, de, de cuántas personas pueden estar en un en negocio a, a, a ese tiempo. Eh, no sé si quieren hablar, para, para hablar de las personas, yo sé que muchas de las personas que ven nuestro Facebook Live, YouTube y, y, y Twitter, eh, nada más que hablan español, so queremos estar seguros que le, le hablamos directamente a ellos. No sé si hay uno de ustedes que quieren hablar de lo que hablaron en inglés, eh, un poquitico en español, para darle una oportunidad a toda la comunidad a tener en esta conversación. Yo puedo resumir lo que yo dije en inglés, en algunas palabras. Eh, básicamente es importante que todos los individuales que vayan a visitar los negocios dentro de la ciudad de Miami Lakes eh, sepan que tienen que. asegurarse también que la persona eh, que el, el dueño del negocio que está siguiendo las regulaciones necesarias es importante que todos nosotros cooperamos durante este periodo de apertura eh, de nuestros negocios ¿por qué? porque queremos queremos llegar a una normalidad total donde se puede resumir nuestras vidas eh, en, en normal y la única manera que hemos llegado a esta eh, a este lugar en estos momentos y una nueva alcalde es que muchas de nuestras ciudades vecindarias eh, la ciudad de Hialeah por ejemplo la ciudad de Miami Gardens que eh, no van a abrir el lunes la ciudad de Miami Lakes sí va a abrir y eso es gracias a todos nuestros ciudadanos que han practicado que eh, han oído a las diferentes órdenes que hemos eh, promulgado y han seguido estas eh, normas y gracias a eso podemos abrir el lunes y es necesario que todas las personas sigan esas regulaciones. Si hay cualquier duda, pueden llamarnos a nosotros. Si ven que algún tipo eh, de ruido de negocio, otras personas no están siguiendo las normas, pueden llamar al departamento eh, de, 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 de Core Enforcement aquí en la ciudad o a la policía también y dejarlo de saber. Eh, nuestro eh, eh, municipio eh, está abierto en estos momentos. Eh, cualquier cosa que necesiten, pueden visitar a nosotros, nos pueden llamar y estamos aquí para servir a nuestro comunidad. Y para estar bien claro, eh, las regulaciones no nada más que son para los negociantes y los negocios, las regulaciones también son para el consumidor. Cuando tú sales de, de tu casa y vas a ir a un negocio, eh, tú tienes varias regulaciones que tienen que, que practicar, que es bien, bien importante, no nada más que mirar lo que está pasando en el negocio y esto, pero tienes que mirarte a, 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 a tú propio, a tú mismo, porque es bien importante, tienes que salir con las máscaras, tienes que salir eh, siempre tener las de nosotros hace un buen trabajo de eso, los otro día salí a recoger una, una comida y había personas en línea y estaban seis pies de distancia y muchas veces mucho más que seis pies eh, y todo el mundo tenía las máscaras, o so gracias por eso, pero acuérdense, las regulaciones 
no nada más que era para, lo, para los negociantes, pero también para la persona yendo a hacer negocio del consumidor. Eh, también eh, el administrador quiere hablar de una de las regulaciones esas, más o menos, para darle la Voy a repetir, eh, eh, alcalde, cuál todos los negocios aquí en Mami Lakes eh, se van a poder eh, abrir el lunes, menos, eh, como se ha dicho ya, la barra. Eh, y dentro del el restaurante, el área de, del bar, no quiere decir que no se va a poder consumir alcohol. Si uno está en un restaurante, está en su mesa, está cenando, va a poder pedir. So, la barra no va a estar cerrada, lo que no va a permitir que, le, que el, el consumidor se sienta en la barra. También van a estar cerrados los cines, los teatros, eh, van a estar cerrados los gimnasios. Eh, los estudios de, de hacer de, de hacer pesa y eso so, el, esos son mayormente los negocios que van a perma, permanecer cerrados eso esperamos que dentro de dos o tres semanas a lo más se van a poder eh, abrir mira el señor Eddie Blanco que es el chairman de la comunidad aquí en nuestra comunidad en su eh, parte del comité del, del alcalde y Mene, que se llama el New Normal Initiative, la iniciativa del nuevo normal aquí en nuestra comunidad. Eh, y parte de las regulaciones que entra bajo el gobernador, hoy mismo eh, la va a llevar por el Estado de porque hacer un trabajo tan, tan bueno y tan detallado, y yo sé que era parte de esa conversación, no sé si quiere hablar un poquito de eso. Lo, lo, lo que quiero tomar el tiempo de, de repetir eh, lo que dijo el abogado de, de la ciudad, que es que nosotros tenemos que trabajar como una comunidad para mantener las reglas de, la, de los negocios para que esto, este pro, el progreso que hemos tenido podamos seguir con ese progreso porque si los números de COVID suben de nuevo vamos a tener que aguantar de nuevo los negocios que eso sería fatal para todo el mundo so, lo, lo ideal sería que todo el mundo eh, haga, haga su esfuerzo en la máscara, en la limpieza de manos, en la distancia social y respetar las reglas que están eh, poniendo en, en, en manos los negocios. Y, por supuesto, apoyar y fuera y, y apoyar los negocios eh, local, localmente. El, el, el diputado Antonio López tiene algo que decir aquí a las personas de su casa. No, por ahora, eh, para seguir manteniendo todas las reglas que, que hemos presentado a la comunidad y asegurar que eh, eh, con los regulamentos que han puesto para adelante para la ciudad. Gracias, Tony. Eh, first of all, I, any, any other questions from uh, Twitter or YouTube? I want to make sure we don't miss anyone. I, I don't see any other questions. Got it, got it, got it. I don't see anything else on Facebook. Uh, thank you guys. You know, make sure you tune into this. More importantly, go on our website right now. Even on this, uh, Clarissa just put the link up right there. So click on it, go through it search for it search for your business uh, and you can see the guidelines if you have questions if you do not know where your business falls shoot us an email let us know uh, that you have your questions put them in writing we will respond to you and make sure that we can get you a, an opinion from our side where we're at and we, we want to see you open as fast as possible so any questions comments concerns send us an email communicate with us we are here to help and And obviously Monday's going to be a great, great, great day for our community because uh, we've sacrificed a lot as, as, a, as a society and as a community as, as a whole. So Monday's really, really, really important day uh, as we move forward. I'll double check one more time if we have uh, any other questions. We don't. Uh, closing statements, anybody? Chime in. Yeah, I just want to, you know, two bits of great information, right? Number one is we're getting ready to reopen. And number two is, as the mayor stated earlier, the curve in the town of Miami Lakes is flat. We have not had a new case in a week. We are still with the same number, 45 cases. We've only had two in the last three weeks. So we basically have uh, 
as a result of all the hard work and sacrifice that everybody's made. Let's not, uh, let's not take a step backwards now. So let's remember today, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to educate, we're going to educate, we're going to educate, we're going to educate. That's all we're going to be talking about. How do we get open on Monday following the proper guidelines? We're, we got four days to do it. I know we can do it. Ask us questions. We're here ready uh, and able to help you uh, comply with these guidelines. Whichever way we got to help you, you know, we are here. Uh, so make sure you reach out to us. But the next four days, that is our focus. That is the focus of all our business owners. And that's really the focus of every single person that lives in our community and loves our community is to make sure that those guidelines are set in stone when it comes whenever you visit a business in our community. But, uh, but yeah, I don't see any other questions. Thank you guys. We'll see you uh, live tomorrow, and we can't wait till Monday. It's going to be a great day in our community. We're going to be visiting uh, businesses. Businesses will be opening again, hiring folks, uh, which is really, 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 really important. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, and just know, everybody up here and all of our council, our staff, our volunteers, we are here for you. We're working together. We are your advocates. And I just want to make sure those businesses that won't be opening up, we're going to continue advocating for you. We want to see you open as soon as possible. And however we can be uh, be there for you, be your advocates, you know, that's, that's what we're going to continue doing until we're 100% open and back to normal in our community. So thank you, Miami Lakers. Take care. God bless you. And together, we will get through this.